Stray Cat Rock Machine Animal Movie Review. So this is now the fourth movie in the Stray Cat Rock series which I've been reviewing. Uh, just to recap, these are a series of five movies that came out in Japan in 1970 which were kind of hippie counterculture movies and kind of violent, sexy youth exploitation movies uh, kind of mashed together. Um, I've been giving each film in the series a mediocre review so far, but I've come this far, I might as well just finish the series off. So here we are, number four in the series. Only one more movie to go after this one. So, excuse me, the um, previous movie in this series I mentioned in spite of kind of all the cheesiness and in spite of the fact that it was kind of an exploitation movie it was actually dealing with a serious topical issue at the time which in this in that case was uh, racially mixed Japanese people uh, of the baby boom generation this one is also a really kind of cheesy exploitative movie which is also attempting to deal with a topical issue or at least an issue that was topical at the time back in 1970 that being the anti-war movement in Japan so this is a huge topic and I've talked about it on other videos and I don't want to get into too much detail here but just the bare bones of it is uh, during the Vietnam War uh, Japan was a staging ground for the US military they, the US military had a lot of bases in Japan uh, which it would use as kind of like a, a refueling almost for the Vietnam War. Uh, there was also a big anti-war, anti-Vietnam War movement in Japan. Uh, and <clears throat> at one point, uh, I think this was in 68 or 69, uh, the group Beihei Ren, which is the Peace in Vietnam uh, Committee, a, a Japanese anti-war group, was able to help three American deserters. So these, these were American army people who didn't want to fight in Vietnam. They were in Japan, they deserted, they made contact with the Japanese anti-war movement, and the Japanese anti-war movement was able to smuggle them out to Sweden. I think via the Soviet Union, I actually don't remember the details. Uh, and that was really big news in Japan at the time. So this movie is inspired by those true life events. Uh, loosely inspired. But the plot of this movie is, uh, well it starts out with Mieko Keiji and her girl motorcycle gang. Now they, they, they've all died multiple times in the previous movies, but each movie has like fresh continuity. So here they all they're all, they're all back again. Uh, and they run into a trio of drug dealers. And uh, the, this girl gang is anti-drug, I guess. They, they really hate the fact that these, these people are going around dealing drugs in their community. So they harass them. They attempt to steal their drugs for them, from them. But then once they figure out that these drug dealers are really soldiers who are trying to escape the Vietnam War, then they become more sympathetic. Now what's really confusing is that the trio of drug dealers look Japanese and speak fluent Japanese. Um, and they can be Japanese because Japan didn't send any soldiers to the Vietnam War. So I think they're Japanese people who are playing Americans. I think. Uh, I, I should admit, actually, that when I watched these movies, I was in Japan at the time. So I was watching them in Japanese without any subtitles. And my Japanese was okay, but it's, it's possible I may have missed something here. Uh, so if I've missed a vital plot point, somebody let me know. But I, I, I think you're just supposed to believe that these are just Japanese Americans, I guess. Uh, so they're, they're, they look Japanese and they speak Japanese, but they're supposed to be playing American soldiers. Um, one, one guy out of the three uh, is referred to as white the whole time. The, 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 the other characters refer to him by the Japanese word for like a white-skinned person. Uh, to my eyes, he looked like he was Japanese. I don't know, maybe he was half. Um, but 
throughout the whole movie, he only spoke in English, even though it was obvious that the actor playing him did not speak English as, an, as a native language. The actor playing him seemed to have a very limited command of English, but he would only speak in the broken English the whole time, and I, I guess the conceit of this movie was he was supposed to be like the, the white guy who didn't speak any Japanese, uh, and then the other two were, I don't know, Japanese Americans who also spoke Japanese. Anyways, they, they, they get a plan to smuggle them out of the country and into safety in Sweden, just like what happened in real events. But then there are complications. The, they're, they get into trouble and there's a rival male motorcycle gang who tries to steal the LSD that these uh, American soldiers are selling. I guess they're selling drugs to survive or whatever. This then sets off a series of double crosses, kidnapping, hostage exchange, and motorcycle chases. There, there are motorcycle chases in all of these movies. And hopefully at this point in the series, I'm not giving anything away by saying there's a tragic end and almost everyone dies because that's the way all these Stray Cat movies end. Uh, I have not seen, this is the fourth one in the series, so far there has not yet been one with a happy ending. I'm not anticipating that the last one in the series has a happy ending. At, th at this point, it's clear that this is the aesthetic they're going for, is that each movie dies with our heroes going out in a blaze of glory. Um, the music is great uh, in this movie. So, uh, all, all of these Stray Cat Rock movies uh, have been have crammed in a lot of pop music and psychedelic pop uh, and this movie as well. In fact, this movie more than the others. Uh, also, characters spontaneously breaking into song, which happened in the previous movie, but it is also in this movie. It, it does not work at all, like it's really cheesy and terrible, but that's all part of the fun of these movies. Uh, and then there's some great bubblegum bubblegum psychedelic pop songs mixed in here as well. So it's not a great film, but it's a lot of fun and it's it's really interesting as a timepiece from 1970 Japan. So I'd recommend it on those grounds. It's a cautious recommendation because I wouldn't recommend it for the, you know, the, the filmmaking quality itself, but worth checking out if you're interested in this old stuff.